I'm very happy uh, meeting with the young Japanese or uh, youth. Uh, because I always was it a feel or and also is it telling people me uh, age now over 70, now myself 75. So we belong to 20th century. The 20th century gone. 20th century uh, we witnessed century of bloodshed, century of violence. According to some historian, the last century, over 200 millions of people killed through violence. Uh, so then later part of the century, desire for peace, non-violence, uh, a start, right? Res resentment, resentment to violence or some kind of feeling of fed up about violence. It's a start later part of the 20th century, then beginning of this 20th century, the desire for peace really increasing. In that field, you, Japanese people, because your own experience uh, during Second World War, you suffer immensely. And actually, two nuclear weapons, nuclear bombs, actually experienced by Japanese people, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, so you are the, uh, the leading nation for peace or against war, particularly against a nuclear weapon. So now you, uh, people age, say, 20, 30 or below, you are the people of this century, 21st century. Now, 21st century, about now 10 years past, 90 years yet to come. So, the what kind of century uh, will be much depend on you, this generation. So I'm indeed very happy meeting with you. Uh, and what's the day? Uh, in react. Uh, oh, so exchange the views. Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, now, I want to tell you, in different part of the world, number of people uh, who have the feeling we humanity basically negative, negative nature. Uh, so violence is part of human nature. Uh, so therefore, the world doom, sorry. Doom, sorry, cousin. Ah, get such a feeling. Ah, doomed. So that kind of sort of view, I think that is totally mistake, wrong. Here there are pockets, pockets, violence there. Still very much there. But if you look overall picture, uh, six billion human beings seems to see uh, through to the 20th century sort of a lot of suffering, we humanity becoming more mature. So people, now for example, the concept of war, and early part of 20th century and later part of 20th century, big change. Uh, and also, the concept of 
I said the environment, issue of environment. In early part, I think maybe very few, but generally no concern, no awareness. We also have the responsibility to take care about this planet. Uh, and then, uh, so at that time, you see, people just, you see, consume uh, everything. Uh, no awareness, limitation of these nature resources. Uh, then also, uh, concept of spirituality. In early part of the 20th century, people only talk about material development, value of matters. Later part of the 20th century, uh, began to feel uh, there is limitation of material value. Ultimately, peace of mind is very essential. So, paying some attention about importance of peace of mind. So whether believer or non-believer, uh, more and more people now talking and thinking about value of spirituality. And also people, because uh, you see generally, you see facing some kind of crisis of moral ethics, so that also brings interest about our moral ethics. Uh, then also in 20th century, in early part of 20th century, the things can change by sort of, what's the, what's the organization with expenses of individual freedom. Looks the Bolshevik Revolution, 1917. And then certain sort of different sort of what's the centralized sort of what's the uh, institution start. Made every effort but fail. So eventually uh, it became very clear human individual creativity is very, very essential. In order to utilize individual creativity, individual freedom is very, very important. So these are big change within one century, uh, in the 20th century. So therefore, uh, Judging from overall picture, uh, we, because of we humanity becoming more mature, more realistic, so therefore things are sort of what's the day, uh, better, better and better. Uh, 1996, uh, I met late Queen Mother of England. At that, that year, her own age, uh, 96. So he, she observed whole century, 20th century. So uh, when I met her, I asked her, since you observed Whole, almost whole century. So according to you, world becoming better or remain same or worse? Without hesitation, she mentioned better. World is uh, improving. Her reason, she mentioned two things. Concept of human right and right of self-determination. When she was young, uh, not sort of common, this concept. Uh, nowadays, uh, the human right and right of self-determination, self these things are universal. She made these two things as an example. Uh, 
so then some extent myself i born 1935 so just the beginning of second world war <laughs> you japanese army all i think already in in, in china isn't it 35 isn't it around 35 uh, i can't remember very exact uh, in any way the uh, second world war Uh, about to start in Europe, Nazi Germany, and Italy, Mussolini, you see these fascist, what you call fascist, you see these, these develop. So then, after Second World War, Korean War, Vietnam War, uh, and so on. So almost in my whole sort of, the, the early part of whole my life, is often news often war uh, and these immense violence fail to solve human problem in fact increasing more problem now today so called terrorism this also traces of uh, or symptom of previous centuries mistake uh, so war i think using violence maximum way i think instead of solving problem reduce problem but actually you see cause of the seedling right center uh, implant seeds of further sort of problems now unfortunately in this early early period of 21st century iraq war exactly you see same president bush sort of motivation good aim is good to bring democracy in iraq but method violent so unexpected consequences will happen So just before Iraq crisis happened, uh, millions of people from Australia up to the United States, you see, express their opposition for using violence. So these are, I feel, the humanity becoming more mature uh, and becoming more realistic. Uh, and through our own experience, uh, you see, now we pay more attention in certain sort of field in which previously neglected. So I feel uh, humanity, uh, after several thousand years, nobody knows what will happen. <laughs> But at least, You see, to the first century, to the second century, to the third century, I think we humanity, our planet, uh, certainly be more peaceful, more compassionate, more happier. Uh, there is possibilities there. But then entirely depend on our own effort and vision, clear vision. Uh, then also I, I Uh, as I would say, I think it's worthwhile to add the early part of the 20th century, uh, mid, mid 20th century, the nations competing construction of nuclear bombs. Now, in the later part of the 20th century, uh, now these uh, recent sort of months, the important nations, mainly United States and, and Russian Federation, Uh, now actually, now seriously, now talking, reducing a nuclear warhead, and eventually total sort of ban nuclear weapons. These are very, very positive sign. So because of that kind of background, uh, because there is real possibility of better world, so, Uh, I am just another human being out of six billion human beings. Uh, I always believe we, everyone, 
have the responsibility to think about the world. Uh, I'm Tibetan. But we belong to six billion human beings. So we have to think about six billion human beings, the whole planet. You Japanese, uh, now time gone. Think, talk about Japan only. No. Now you must think, talk about the whole world, because Japan's future depends on the rest of the world. In ancient time, I think 18th century, 19th century, you see, nation, nation to nation, more or less independent. So they, they themselves manage something like self-sufficient. Uh, now, today, that kind of situation completely changed. Even in the United States, powerful nation, their future depends on the rest of the, other, other, other day, rest of the world. And look, the spirit of European Union. In, in, in the past so centuries, these small, small nations, you see, fought for their own sovereignty. Isn't it? Uh, uh, the, the subject of uh, the, the people of each nation, they really willing to sacrifice their own life to save their own national sort of sovereignty, these things. Now uh, they realize common interest is more important than individual in, sort of interest. The individual's interest very much mixed, mixed with common interest. So therefore, the, after Second World War, I think during De Gaulle and Ardenna, this is the new sort of concept, European Union created. The Euro, these like the German, German Deutschmark, Deutschmark, very powerful currency, but they are willing to sacrifice. But the Italian leader, like Japan's yen, because <laughs> not much, I'll say they, because of the value. <laughs> so then, okay. But this is even if it's powerful, like German, you see, they willing to sacrifice their own sort of independent sort of, what's it, they, uh, the sign of independence or sovereignty for common interest like that. So these things are really a clear sign. People now getting more as that. Wider, because of that, people now realize wider interest is more important than one's own selfish, sort of self-centered interest. This is very important. Now, Copenhagen summit about global warming failed to bring concrete result. Why? Some important nation they uh, consider their national interest more important than global interest. That's why it failed. So some young nation still, you see, thinking, you see, their national interest more important than global in interest. So world at large, these are changing. So therefore, I, as a one human being out of six billion, so with sense of uh, global responsibility, I have two commitments. Number one commitment is promoting inner value. Inner value means from birth, biologically, we equipped showing affection to other, sense of sort of concern about others' well-being. From childhood, this biological factor, we already equip these things. So that's very, very precious because we are social animal. Individual life depends on others, sort of what's it, uh, member, other members. So therefore, emotionally, there is something which brings together. That is human affection, human compassion. Uh, so, whether believer or non-believer, these things are biologically we equipped. So I always say, now, according to scientists, 
latest scientific finding, warm-heartedness is very important for healthy body. So sometimes they call healthy mind, healthy body. It is true. Constant anger, fear, actually eating our immune system, according to some scientists. So more compassionate mind automatically bring inner peace, calm mind. Calm mind, very essential for healthy body. Uh, so therefore, these things I describe as a human value. So wherever I go, I always try to make clear. The money important, but this inner sort of wealth is more important than external wealth. This is my number one commitment. The second commitment, I am Buddhist. Uh, all major rich traditions, in spite of different philosophy, all have same potential and also same message, message of love, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, self-discipline. Uh, so therefore, uh, different religious traditions uh, have same sort of say, potential to help humanity uh, and to bring these inner human value. So then, because there's a different philosophy, uh, fighting and more division and fighting is silly, baseless. Different approach is necessary. Different philosophy necessary in order to because in order to benefit or in order to uh, influence or impact the different people because different people different mental disposition. So just one philosophy is simply not sufficient. We need variety of philosophy, variety of approach, way of approach. Uh, it's more useful to variety of people. So long, the aim is same. Try to bring more compassionate sort of person, more sort of what's today, uh, truthful pers person or truthfulness, compassion, these are the object, all major institutions. So it's the same goal. Different method. It's necessary. Different method is necessary. Within Buddhism, there are different philosophy, different concepts of reality. Buddha, Buddha, I mean, Buddha himself, you see, taught different contradictory philosophy. Why? Among his own follower, there are different people, different mental disposition. So just a simply one philosophical view will not sort of say sufficient to variety of people within his own sort of follower. So obviously we need different way of approach. But these are just different way of approach. But the essence is the same, to bring inner peace. So therefore, uh, there is common ground and a common goal. So therefore, you see, try to, uh, try to bring closer relation between different religious tradition. So this is my number two sort of commitment, to promote harmony among the different religious tradition. So, so that's almost the introduction of myself. <laughs>